Good evening, New Beginning Church and our online family and friends. Thank you once again for joining us on tonight. We, it's just a blessing to be able to come into your homes and on your workplaces if you join us for this broadcast on tonight. We pray that you will click the share button and start a watch party with your family and friends. Our scripture tonight will come from John 3, 16 through 17. And it reads, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. So these verses are telling us that there is only one way to God the Father, and that is through Jesus Christ, his Son. So if you're wrestling with whether or not to give your life to Jesus, take off your boxing gloves and wrestle no longer, because Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. But he is of no value to you unless you become, unless he becomes your way to salvation that leads to eternal life in God. All you have to do is admit that you are a sinner and that you've made some mistakes. Then you must believe that Jesus is God's son. He died on the cross for you and on the third day, he rose from the dead. Then you confess Jesus as the Lord of your life and commit yourself to a life of following Jesus. And you ask Jesus to come into your life and save your soul. So let's let Jesus help you today because he is the answer. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Regardless of your situation or what you're going through, guess what? Jesus is the answer. Above him, there is no other, no other God above Jesus. So if you're looking for love, Jesus is the way. If you're looking for joy, Jesus is the way. If you're looking for peace, Jesus is the way. So come on, come on. Jesus is is the way. He is the answer for the world today. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus. 
Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for another privilege, another chance, another opportunity to come before you, Lord. God, we thank you for keeping us and blessing us, for giving us the right mind to come before you. Now, Lord, we ask you to forgive us for our sins. Bless our lives. Keep us, Father God, faithful unto you. Now, Lord, we pray, Father God, that you bless us to recognize who Jesus is and recognize that he is the way. We pray that you bless us as we come tonight to study your word. Bless your word to fall on good soil. Bless your word, Father God, to go forth that men, women, boys, and girls will fall out with their evil ways, that they will turn to Jesus Christ and realize that he is the only way. We pray that you bless me now, Father God, as I present your word. Bless me, Father God, to speak your word. Speak it as you would have it spoken. And bless us, Father God, in this time together. And Lord, we ask you to keep the glory, all the honor and all the praise. Allow us to be beneficiaries of your many blessings. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful, and anointed name of Jesus the Christ we pray, and we ask it all. Amen, and thank God. Jesus is the way, Jesus is the answer for the world today. But in there's no other, Jesus is the way. Amen. <clears throat> Certainly, Jesus the Christ, Jesus is, he is the way. Amen, he is the way. We're here in Colossians chapter 2 again, Colossians chapter 2. We're at verses number 11 and 12 for tonight. Colossians chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. It is in the New Testament, Colossians chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. When you found it, Colossians chapter 2. Verses 11 and 12. When you found it, you will discover these words, and I am reading from the New King James Version. In him you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Bear it with him in baptism in which you also were raised with him through the faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. On well, last week, we talked about the fact that the him that the Bible is speaking of in Colossians chapter 2, the him is Jesus Christ. And so tonight, Paul begins this portion of the pericope again by calling Jesus him. We need to understand that it is in him. Paul says on other occasions that in him I live, in him I move, and in him I have my being. So the him here is Jesus the Christ. The him is Jesus the Christ, the son of the living God, Jesus Christ, he is certainly the only way. We live in tough times right now. And in the midst of these tough times, we need to be sure, very, very sure that we are in him. We can't wonder about it. We can't think about it. We can't think somebody told me about him. We need to be found in him. In him. Because once you're in him, you cannot be extracted from him. You cannot be removed from him. Once he's in you, he cannot be removed from you. In John's gospel, John talks about in John chapter 10 that Jesus the Christ is the door to the sheepfold. Jesus the Christ, Jesus Christ is the only way to get to God and the only way to get to heaven. He goes further to say that the thief kills, the thief comes, but the kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus has come that we might have life, 
and have that life more abundantly. He goes on to talk about the fact that once we are in him, in Jesus Christ, no man can pluck us out. Jesus says that if you were of my sheepfold, you would not have issues with me. If you were in my sheepfold, you would not have issues with my disciples. If you were in my sheepfold, you would not have issues with my regulations, with my commandments. We have to be found in him. Yes. Whether we're Republican or Democratic, Independent or Tea Party or whatever it may be, we need to be found in him. Today, we put forth too much effort to be found associated with other things and other people when we're not putting forth enough effort to be sure that we are found in him. Yes. Tonight, Paul gives us a snapshot of what sanctification and salvation gives us. Paul says, when we are justified, meaning that when we are considered righteous, when righteousness is imputed in us, when we are saved, he comes in. Mm -hmm. Who is he? Jesus Christ comes in. And when Jesus Christ comes in, God the Father is present. God the Son is present. God the Holy Spirit is present. You don't have to get in another prayer line to receive the Holy Spirit. Yes. When you're saved, when you're born again, you're in him, meaning that the entire Trinity comes in. I submit to you tonight, you must be, you got to be, you have to be, you need to be born again. Mm -hmm. In these tough times, we need to be found in him. I want to begin tonight by giving this demonstration, this, this demonstration, if you can see it, say amen. This is a clear half a jar of water. This is a clear jar of water. It's not filled, but it has liquid, clear liquid in it. But when I take this tea and I pour it in this jar of water, mm -hmm. this tea, maple tea, this tea with probiotics in it. This tea with colors in it. This tea represents us in him. This tea represents us in him. Once we're in him, we can't get out of him. Once this tea is mixed with this water, there is no way possible to get the tea in the water to separate and go back to his original form because now the tea is in the water and the water is in the tea. It's a very simple scientific experience, but the fact of the matter is, once Jesus is in us, we are in him. Once we are in Jesus, we are in him and he is in us. And there is no turn around. You can vaporize it. It's still in him. You can put us under pressure. We're still in him. Yes. We, can, we can get out of, out of range. We can, we can move and we can spend time doing things that we should not do. But the fact of the matter is when it comes to salvation, we're still in him. We may not measure up with our sanctification, but when it comes to salvation, we are still in him. And while we're in him, we ought to act like we're in him. While we're in him, we ought to carry ourselves like we're in him. While we're in him and while he is in us, we ought to represent him well. Further down in this pericope, as we will talk next week and the following weeks, we will find out that he talks about the fact tonight that we are in him, 
But he goes on in, in the upcoming weeks, bless you. He talks about in the upcoming weeks, the fact that we have to carry ourselves as if we're in him. Matter of fact, he calls sins adultery. He's saying that we are worshiping idol gods when we're in him and we sin. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. But whatever you do tonight, remain. Remember that we are in him and we remain in him. Amen. There's no separation of the tea and the water. Once I poured the tea in the water, they mixed. So the first part of this verse says, in him you are also circumcised in him, in Jesus, in Jesus. Let me tell you, once we are in him, we are to remain in him and there's no separation. It, we are inseparable now. What I'm saying to you is once you're born again, once you're saved, once you have trusted the story of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, you are in him and he's in you. So verse number 11, Colossians chapter 2 says, in him you were also circumcised with the circumcision not with hands or without hands. You see, Paul addresses this to this church at Colossae because number one, Gnosticism was there. The Gnostics, as I told you previously, the Gnostics didn't believe in the fullness of Jesus Christ. The Gnostics did not support the principle that the fullness of God is in Jesus Christ. We are complete in him. We are strengthened and we have power through him. And because we're in him, we have power that many of us are not using. We have to walk in him. We have to talk in him. We have to live in him. So he says tonight to us in verse number 11 of second of verse number 11 of the second chapter of Colossians, Colossians chapter two, verse 11, he says, in him were you were also circumcised by a circumcision not made by hand, a circumcision without any physical hands. A circumcision without any man's involvement. Mm -hmm. What he's saying is the Jewish custom was for a boy child to be circumcised by the cutting away of his foreskin, by the cutting away of his flesh. It was a physical circumcision. Now here Paul comes talking to them and letting them know that you are not circumcised by this physical uh, circumcision. You are circumcised by the spirit of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. by the spirit of God. Look at what he says. He says, in him, you were also circumcised. You were circumcised just like the Jews were, the Jews were circumcised. But you were circumcised with a circumcision not made by hands, without hands. By the putting off of the body of the sins of the flesh, by the circumcision of Christ. He says to us tonight that we were circumcised by the cutting away of the body, the putting off of the body, the putting to sleep or the death of the body. When we're circumcised by Jesus Christ, circumcised by the Holy Spirit, we have put the old man to rest. We have killed the old man. We have a new body now. We have a new mindset. He says that you were circumcised by circumcision without hands by the putting off of the body of the sins of the flesh. You see, circumcision in the physical body has nothing to do with your sins. If you are circumcised and you are a sinner, and we all are, you will be a circumcised sinner. Paul gets this point across to the church of Colossae because the Gnostics were present, and then he moves from Gnosticism to tonight he moves to legalism. 
Legalism are those who rush by the rights and rush and learn and live by rules and regulations that has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You see, we all have to be governed by rules and regulations. We have to teach our children to be governed by rules and regulations. Yes. Right. They have to learn to, to be given no and they stop. They have to learn that they are boundaries to everything. Because if our children are in us, they have to learn the rules and regulation of the household. Amen. Whenever I grew up, Daddy let, it, let us know on a regular basis, you are a Davis. Mm -hmm. There are rules and regulations here. And these rules and regulations may not be at the Weeks household. It may not be at the Carriers household, but they're at the Davis households. And because you are a Davis, you're going to carry yourself like you are a Davis. These are similar situations that the Colossians church faced. And these were legalistic ideas where they would have to do physical circumcision in order to consider themselves spiritually well. Paul comes and he tells them that you have been circumcised also, but you have been circumcised in your heart, mm -hmm. not in your flesh. He says, you don't have to be circumcised by the putting away of your physical flesh, The putting, but you've been circumcised by the spirit of God and it is the putting away of your body. It is the putting away of the sins of this world. It is the putting away of the sins of this flesh. Paul says us to us tonight, as he says to the church at Colossae, that you have been circumcised, but our hearts have been circumcised. You can always tell when a person is born again. <laughs> When a person is born again, they can't say anything to you, do, in, do anything to you, treat you any kind of way, and just go on and live their lives. When you are circumcised by the Spirit of God, when you are born again, you know how to treat people. And if you mess up and mistreat somebody, the Spirit of the Lord will convict you and convince you to turn around and do it another way. I oftentimes question the salvation of some, some church folk because they can say anything. They can do anything. They can treat people any kind of way and don't even worry about it. Yes, they can walk from point A to point B and act like things are just fine after they mistreat somebody. Let me tell you, if you're saved, if you are born again, if you have received Jesus Christ as your Savior, you've been circumcised. You've been turned around. You've been cut away. The flesh of the sins of your life have been turned away, has been cut away. Paul says, you've been circumcised with the circumcision without hands, without any physical body, without a physical person cutting you. You've been cut in your heart. You've been circumcised in your heart. And when you've been circumcised in your heart, you have the putting off of the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Jesus Christ. You've been circumcised. You've been different. People don't, people wonder how you do the things you do, how you're able to put up with so much. You see the person who's been circumcised in their heart, they can tell you, I didn't treat him like I used to treat folks. People who've been circumcised in their heart, they are, they are governed by the rules and the regulation of Jesus Christ. Amen. We have to be circumcised in our hearts. And once we're saved, it's a daily occurrence. I told you he talks about salvation and he also talks about sanctification. Salvation is a one-time event. You are saved one time and one time only. You don't need to be saved again. You are saved one time and one time only. You trust the story of Jesus' death, burial, and his resurrection. You are born again once and forever. Jesus died on the cross 
one time, one time only, and his death on the cross, his resurrection from the dead, that combination creates a salvation story in us and we're saved for once and for all. Yes. We are saved. We are circumcised once and for all. But then there is a daily occurrence, a hourly occurrence called sanctification. Mm -hmm. And the sanctification process goes on until Jesus come back to get you. The sanctification process is you becoming holy every day. Every day as you read the word, every day as you walk in God, every day as you, you do the things that God has asked you to do, you become more and more sanctified every day. Back home, we didn't want to. We didn't go to. We didn't want to go to the sanctified church because we had seen a picture of what we thought sanctification would look like. We thought when people jumped up, ran around the room, spoke in tongues, that they were being sanctified. We thought because it was the sanctified church. We thought that when people speak in other tongues, when people do their holy dance, that when they wore dresses down past their knees or to their ankles, we thought that's what made them sanctified. We thought because girls did not wear makeup because their, their situation, their, their denomination didn't allow them to, we thought that's what made them sanctified. But what makes you sanctified is living a holy, godly life. A life before God and before other men. That's when you're sanctified. When you're sanctified, when you're saved, when you've been circumcised in your heart by the cutting away of the, 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 the sins that's in your heart, you are sanctified. And when you are sanctified, you live a life a different way than what you used to live in. Places you used to go, you don't go to anymore. People you used to deal with in a, in a sinful way, you don't deal with them in the way anymore because it is the cutting away of the spiritual heart. It is a spiritual, it is a spiritual cutting away. It is a cutting away. This word putting off the body, it, this term means cutting away to never return again. That's why Peter says in 2 Peter uh, chapter 2, verses 19 through 22, he says, it is better for a man to not have known the way of righteousness than to turn back to the filth that God had cleaned them up from. Yeah. He goes on to say that it's nothing more than a dog of hog going back to while in the mud and the murk that, that God has cleaned and rescued him from. And then he says, not only are you like a sow or a hog that runs back to the mud, you're also like a dog who eats food, vomit it up, and lick it up again. He vomits it up. Whenever we go back to our sinful ways, it's like a dog vomiting up his food and licking it up again. Paul says, we have been, we have been circumcised. Our hearts have been changed. Our hearts have been circumcised to the cutting away of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Jesus Christ, the anointing one, anointed one. Jesus Christ, the son of God. We have been circumcised. Hallelujah. My heart has been circumcised to I just can't treat people any kind of way. My heart has been circumcised until I don't like to sin anymore. My heart has been circumcised until when my sin nature rises up or get up, I, I begin to push it away because my heart has been circumcised. When you can sin at will and don't think anything of it, you have to question your circumcision in the Lord Jesus Christ. Then he says in verse number 12, talking to the same group of people who've been circumcised through Jesus Christ. He says, you are buried with him in baptism in which you also were raised with him through the faith in the working of God 
who raised him from the dead. He talks about baptism. And he's not talking about water baptism. Because the old folk back home used to say it like this. You can go in a dry devil and come out a wet devil. So the water baptism does not save us. He gives two analogies here. First of all, the first analogy is circumcision. And in the Jewish context, the circumcision was physical. In the Jewish content, the second thing he parallels this to is baptism. And that also, the Jewish content of baptism was physical. So he draws these two analogies and he says that you were baptized in him. He says you were buried with him in baptism. What he's saying is baptism doesn't save us. Baptism is not what justifies us. Baptism is not what gets us to heaven. We ought to be baptized, but the baptism does not save us. What baptism is, is an outward display. It's an outward testimony of what we believe on the inside. And it's a symbol it is a symbol of our inward change, of the change we made on the inside. We are saying to everybody who watches us, everybody who sees us go down in baptism, we are saying we believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. So picture this. The preacher, the deacon, the associate of the church takes one into the water holds their hand. They walk in the water. They are standing there. As they are standing there, they're saying that I believe that Jesus is the son of God. They have showed up in the water because they first of all believe that Jesus Christ is the only begotten, the only unique, the only true son of God. So I have chosen to come to the water to be baptized. So when they stand in the water, they're saying, I believe that I am the son of God, that Jesus, rather, is the son of God. And because Jesus is the son of God, because Jesus is the son of God, I've shown up at the water. Because I believe he's the son of God, I'm here to be baptized. Amen. And then when the preacher, the deacon, or whatever associate takes that person down into the water, that person is saying, I believe that Jesus, the son of God, died for my sins. Mm -hmm. So when they take that person down into the water with grave, that person is saying, I believe that Jesus died for my sin and they buried him. They buried him in a borrowed tomb. So when you show up, you're saying, I believe that Jesus is the son of God. Number two, when you, they, they take you down into the water, you believe that he died for your sins and he was buried in a borrowed tomb. It is a symbol. It is a testimony. And then when they bring you up out of the water, it says that you believe that Jesus rose from the dead. That's a powerful thing that Paul points out here in, in, in Colossians chapter 2, verses 11 through 12. He points it out. He says, first of all, the circumcision by which you've been circumcised is spiritual. It is the cutting way of the heart. It's the cutting away of your sin from your heart. You have, had a, you have a new heart. You've been changed. You're different. And people look at you differently. They believe that you're different. People believe that you've been changed based on what they see. And then he moves to verse number 12, and he says that you've been baptized. He says, you are buried with him in baptism. Mm -hmm. You Symbolically, you are buried with him. But what's really happening is spiritually, once you're saved, once you've accepted Christ as your Savior, you are spiritually buried with Christ Jesus. 
You're saying that because I believe this story that everybody will not believe, I believe this story that Jesus died for my sins, he was buried in a borrowed tomb and rose from the dead. You're saying that I'm buried with him in baptism. It goes on to say, in which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. He says, I'm, I believe the story. I'm convinced of the story. This is a simple lesson tonight. And the reason why it's simple is because Paul is trying to get these new Christians to understand you don't have to go back to the old way. You don't have to believe in Gnosticism. You don't have to believe in legalism. And legalism is when you're so content with the rules and the regulation till you won't do the right thing unless the rule and the regulation apply. It is, it is legalism is when they used to decide that I'm not going to work on Sunday or I'm not going to work on the Sabbath. I'm not going to do work on the Sabbath. And then the question was asked, if your oxen fall into the ditch on the Sabbath, will you pull them out on the Sabbath? That's work. Even today, you have some who believe that they ought not work on the Sabbath. They ought not work on the Sabbath because the bottom line is, if I work on the Sabbath, then I'm sinning. Jesus come to get our attention, to let us know that we don't have to live by those old rights, rights, R-I-T-E-S. We don't have to live by those old rituals. We don't have to live by those ever again because we are baptized in Christ Jesus. We were buried in his baptism in which you also was raised. See, when you got saved, you believed the story that he died, he was buried, and he rose. You were saved because you were raised with him. Look at what he says. He says, buried with him in baptism in which you also was raised in him. You were raised in him, and how was I raised with him? Through faith. I was raised in him through faith, and this was not my working. This was not my doing. It is the working of God. Our salvation is not what we do. The salvation is because of what God has already done. And he did it through Jesus Christ. He says, he says, you, you, you are buried with him in baptism. Verse number 12, Colossians chapter two, you're buried with him in baptism in which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God. God worked this thing out on your behalf. God worked it out because all of us deserve death. All of us deserve hell, but God worked it out through Jesus. He, he allowed Jesus to die. He allowed Jesus to be buried. And he raised Jesus from the dead. The next few, few weeks, we're going to talk about the power we have through this resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because the fact of the matter is, that same Holy Spirit, the same power, the same anointing that raised up a dead Jesus, God has given him to us in the person of the Holy Spirit. That's why we should not talk about the Holy Spirit, it. We ought to talk about the Holy Spirit, he. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me that I am his own. He is the Holy Spirit. Jesus says to them in John chapter 14, I got to leave you now. I'm going to prepare a place for you. Then he talks about in John 16 that you're going to have power. Verse 17, in John 17, he talks about the fact that God helped me keep these that I've given. Those who have come to me, keep them and bless them to be unified. Talks about the church being unified. So we are, we are raised in him through the power of the Holy Spirit. The same power the same anointing, the same Holy Spirit that raised up a dead Jesus lives in us today. Amen. He lives in us. He, he walks with us. He talks with us. He tells us that I, we are his own. He raised us. He says, 
you were buried with him in baptism in which you also were raised with him. <clears throat> See, in other words, not only are we raised, not only were we buried and raised, we are also co laborers with Jesus Christ. What he's saying is we, we were co-buried with him and we were co-resurrected in him. Are you with me? We were buried with Jesus Christ. And because we were buried with him in baptism by the cutting away of the sins from our hearts, we were buried with him in baptism. We were also raised with him in resurrection. That's why Paul says that I want to know him and the power of of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. See, we have to get to know him. When he says, I want to know him in the power of his resurrection, he's saying, I want to know him in good times. <laughs> and all of us want to know God, and we want to know God when God walks with us and talks with us and, and things are going well and things are not burdensome for us. We want to know him because we can claim the power of his resurrection. But we are reluctant to claim him in the fellowship of his suffering. Don't you know we have to go through some things also? We have to go through some things as everybody else has to go through some things. And we, we ought to want to know him like Paul said he's want to know him. We want to know him not only in the power of his resurrection, we want to know him in the fellowship of his suffering. We're going to have to suffer sometimes. We're going to have to go through some things sometimes. We, we're going to have to be dealt with sometimes in a way that we don't want to be dealt with. It says, you're raised with him through faith in the working of God. God laid this out. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9, he says that we, we are saved by grace through faith. Not of ourselves, lest any man should boast. We can't brag about it. Because number one, we're saved through grace. And the grace was given to us through God. This love, this favor God has given us. And then we are saved by faith. And this faith is not even ours. We have faith. Paul says in Romans that we have faith that God has given unto every man a measure of faith. So we can't brag about the grace and we can't brag about the faith. Amen. Folk walk around talking about, well, I got faith. You don't have anything but what God has granted unto you. And God has chosen to give you grace. God has chosen to bless you. God has chosen to give you the grace in the faith that you have. Amen. God has chosen. God is merciful. We don't deserve it, but God has chosen to give it to us. And we've been raised in him through faith in the working of God. And finally, he says in verse number 12, who raised him from the dead. Mm -hmm. Who raised Jesus? <laughs> him. Jesus was raised from the dead by God himself. They tried, they, they tried to put rumors out that the disciples would come and steal him overnight. But Jesus got up by the power of God. He was raised from the dead. Hallelujah. Amen. And the same power that raised up a dead Jesus is in us. This power that we talk about, dunamis power, dynamite power. It is... It is, it is the, the explosive power. It is the ability to make some things happen. The same power is in us. Yes. The Holy Spirit is in us. Also, the excusia power. It is, it, is, it, is that, it is not the dynamite power, but it is, it is the authority that is given to us. We have authority to get some things done through faith that nobody else on planet earth has. The saint of God, the born again person of God has power that no one else on earth has. We are saved and we've granted power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. He says the same power 
who raised Jesus, the same God who raised Jesus, the same Holy Spirit that raised him from the dead, who raised a dead Jesus. Now, let me just tell you, Jesus wasn't just laying in there asleep. He was dead. Mm -hmm. He was all the way dead. There was no, no theory that when the cool air blew, he woke up. Let me tell you, Jesus was dead. Matter of fact, the Roman soldiers made sure he was dead. Wow. See, that's what happens. What happened, what happened during that time is, is that when, when they know that you're dead, they leave you alone. But when they're not sure that you're dead and you're being crucified on a cross... You notice the story is told that the Roman soldier walked up and pierced him in his side with the spear. It's been preached wrong. Some preachers say that, that he, he hung, he bled, and he died. That's just good hooping. But it's not good theology. He didn't hang, bleed, and die. He hung, died, and bled. He hung, he died, and he bled. Because when they stuck the spear in his side and out came blood and water, they noticed that he was already dead. Matter of fact, if he had not de been dead, he would have twisted when they stuck him. But Jesus was already dead. And because he was already dead, we got to get our sequence right. He didn't hang bleed, and die. <laughs> he hung, died, and bled. Okay. Jesus was already dead. <laughs> when they pierced him in his side, he didn't move. He was dead. The Bible teaches that he had already hung his head in the locks of his shoulder, and he died. He died a horrible death just for you and just for me. And if you are listening to me tonight, I want to drive these two verses home. Colossians chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. We are in him. And as we remember that we are in him, once we are saved, you can't take the tea out of the water. And you can't take the water out of the tea. Once we are born again, once we're in Christ Jesus, we can't get Jesus out of us. And we can't get out of Jesus. Once we are born again, once we are saved, once we have a new life, we are saved from now on. <clears throat> the first two words say in him. We are in him. So don't let anybody give you any missed messages. Paul makes it clear tonight. Colossians chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. He makes it clear we're in him. He dispelled this legalistic argument. He dispelled this legalistic argument that you got to have circumcision. The cutting away of the foreskin. He said, you already been circumcised. Not the cutting away of the foreskin, but you've been circumcised with the cutting away of the flesh of the heart. He emphasizes that, that you have not been circumcised with the hands of man. Mm -hmm. He says you've been circumcised without hands. You've been circumcised by the spirit of God. That's right. God himself. He says by the putting, putting away or the putting off of the body of the sin of the flesh. In other words, we don't have to sin. We just sin. We still have a sin nature. And because we have a sin nature, we love sin. People talk about the good old days because they still have that sin nature. And whenever we hear the right tune, it takes our mind back. Whenever we think about the things of yesteryear, it takes our mind back. But we have the power in us. We have the person in us of the Holy Spirit. He walks with us. He talks with us. We've been circumcised through Jesus the Christ. And in verse number 12, he closes it out by saying, we've been buried with him in baptism, in which we also raised with him. We were raised with him by way of the Holy Spirit. And this is the working of God. 
This is a God thing. We, we've been saved because of a God thing. We've been sanctified because of the God thing. You can't brag about your sanctification. It's a God thing. If it had not been, the songwriter says, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I've been messed up. I've been going to hell. But God saved me. He saw fit to save me. He says, been raised through faith. It's God's working. And this same God raised Jesus from the dead. Same power that raised up the dead. Jesus is available to you tonight. The door of the church is open. The invitation is ex extended. You can get to know Jesus. This Jesus who's the son of God. This Jesus who died on a tree. This Jesus who died between two thieves. This Jesus that refused to come down because he had you in mind. You can get to know him today. You can get to know Jesus. Very simple way, very simple message. You just need to believe the story that Jesus died for your sins. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. And early that third day morning, he rose from the dead. You need to invite him into your life tonight. Ask him to come into your life and make you a new person. The text declares that we're buried with him, but we're also raised with him. I submit Jesus to you tonight. Just trust in him. If you would, bow your head with me and invite Jesus into your life. Because when you invite him in, you guarantee yourself a spot in heaven. When you, when you invite him in, when you die, you go to heaven, not hell. You cancel your trip to hell. Nobody can cancel the trip but Jesus. So bow your head with me tonight and invite Christ into your life. Just repeat after me. Very simple. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life. Make me a new person. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And thank God. We believe that if you honestly prayed this prayer and invited Jesus in, we believe that you're born again and you're on your way to heaven when you die. We believe that you just missed hell. We believe that you are buried with Christ and we believe that you've been raised with him. Thank you for receiving him tonight. And if there are those of you who are in between church home or you don't have a church home, I recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus is the captain of the ship, where Jesus is the main attraction, where Jesus is the one who gets our attention and he will get yours. You can join by, by media. We've had four people join in the last two weeks. And you can do that regardless of what part of the world you're in, you can do that by inboxing me and I'll send you the opportunity to, to join the New Beginning Church. And not only that, if you have received Christ tonight, we want to know about it, we want to rejoice with you, please inbox me, message me, and let me know that you received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. We want to rejoice with you. And if you need prayer, inbox me and let me know you need prayer. We'll be praying with you and praying for you. So many of you have, have gotten our attention and told us that you need prayer and we're praying for you. We be, believe that prayer moves the hand of God. So continue to pray for us and we'll continue to pray for you. It is now offering time. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. We want to bless the Lord 
and our gifts on tonight. To our members, we want to remind you that that we ought to be giving 10% or more off of our gross income to the Lord because God has just blessed us. Some people who haven't given, now they don't have it to give because God allowed jobs to be, escape them. I want to say to you, while blood is yet running warm in your body, while, while you still have jobs or you still have any income, grant God 10%. Return to God 10% of your gross income and watch what God does. You can give by three forms. First of all, you can give by Cash App. Our cash tag is dollar sign NBC Souls, dollar sign NBC Souls, or cash tag NBC Souls, so you can give by Cash App. Or you can give by Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com lifting.jesus at yahoo.com you can give by Zelle now for those of you who want to use the mailbox you can mail your offering to the New Beginning Church PO Box 503 Missouri City Texas 77459 PO Box 503 Missouri City Texas 77459 you can give by any of these three means. Let me thank you again tonight for watching and being a part of our service here at the New Beginning Church from our remote location. We're here every Wednesday night at 7.20 p.m. Thank you for joining us by way of Zoom as well as uh, Facebook Live. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for joining us on Sunday morning, and we invite you to continue to join us on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for our Sunday school, Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for our Sunday school. And then continue to join us for 10.45 a.m. on Sunday morning, 10.45 a.m. for our worship service. We're glad that you are joining us. Thank you so much for being a part of our service tonight and our service on Sunday morning as well as our Sunday school. Just a few announcements before we go. It is time to vote. Please, everyone, I hope you've already registered to vote. Uh, please, everyone, get out and vote. Everyone who's able to vote, this is a, a great right that we have to vote. Please, ma'am, please, sir, get out and vote. Do whatever you have to do. Make sure your voice is heard. Make sure you get out to vote. Secondly, make sure you pray. Make sure you continue to call on God and honestly uh, ask God what to do and ask God how to do it. And also thank God for what he has already done. Our prayer meeting is this, this Tuesday by way of conference call. Uh, on second Tuesdays, our prayer meetings are by conference call. And on fourth Tuesdays, our prayer meeting are about, is by Z uh, Z Zoom. So please, ma'am, please, sir, join us for our prayer meeting on this Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Also, I want to announce to our youth and our young people, I know you're back in school now. Uh, we're looking forward to hearing from you. Please uh, get in contact with Sister Davis. If you have any achievements, we want to recognize your achievements. We want to know how you're doing in school. We want to know how your school is going. On third Sunday, we'll be recognizing all our youth and our young people as they're going through school. Just know, Pastor Davis, it's praying for you. I know it's a tough time. I know it's difficult learning, but God is able to do whatever you need to do. God has already blessed us and blessed us to be able to do it. Again, thank you so much for joining us here tonight. Thank you for being a part of our service to our to our visitors. Thank you for contributing to our church. We don't, we do not, we don't consider it something that we should take for granted. So thank you for being a contributor. Uh, for our visitors to the New Beginning Church. And thank you for walking with us through this tough time as we broadcast from a, a long distance, a remote location. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. We at the New Beginning Church, we are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering native neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, "In I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. 
John chapter 12 and verse 32. Father God, we thank you now. We thank you for him. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the Holy Spirit and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for blessing us one more time, Father God, to hear your word, to speak your word, to live your word, and to act out your word. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless everybody to be reminded. In him we move. In him we live. In him we have our being. Bless us to be reminded, Lord, that we've been circumcised in our hearts, not by the physical hand of man, but by the Holy Spirit. So much so, Lord, that we can put away the flesh of this body and the sins of this flesh. Because we are circumcised through Jesus Christ, we're also buried with him in baptism. And we are also raised with him by the working of God through faith. And through him who has raised up a dead Jesus, we give glory, we give honor, and we give praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Again, thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to hearing from you, seeing you, being with you, and sharing with you on Sunday morning. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.